I'm Coop, this is a video review of the Nerf Rebel Guardian Crossbow. Included comes the blaster with the bows detached, a few specialized uh, colored elite darts, and the instructions. Alrighty, as always, I will start with the externals and show you its firing and give you my opinion on the blaster. So the externals, starting with the front, you have a six dart uh, front loading turret in the front here. It's the purple thing. This is extremely straightforward to load. You simply press darts into it. It doesn't have to come out. It doesn't move. It just, just sits there. Of course, when it's operating, it's rotating, but to load, it's very straightforward, very fast. Um, turret blasters are awesome because you could be primed, ready to fire, and still be loading the empty barrels as you're still on target. Up top here are the bow arms. These are purely cosmetic. They don't actually do anything. They do move when you're firing, but it's not helping propel the dart by any means. Um, they look adorable, I suppose. Other than that, no function. Up here is a tactical rail, so you can add any sights, the little iPhone mount, or whatever you want up there. This little knob here is connected to the bow string um, and the internal, so every time you prime it, you can see the little bow arms move back and forth and the string is pulling them. Other than that, it doesn't do anything. Down here is the priming handle. Um, it is a small priming handle relative to other blasters, um, but it is still very comfortable. This whole blaster is pretty much downsized because it is um, guided towards females, and I'm also a, an adult male. I usually complain about the size of Nerf guns anyways since I'm not a child. Um, but it is very comfortable and very easy to use. The prime weight of this blaster is pretty light, or pretty regular, I, I should say. Um, so it's really not a problem to prime this quickly. It's also a pretty smooth prime, um, considering what's going on internally. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the priming mech. Here's the trigger. Uh, this is a single stage spring release trigger. Not a big deal, very smooth. The trigger guard looks a little goofy. Um, that's just an opinion. Getting to the grip, um, it is a very comfortable grip, an ergonomic grip, but it is a small grip. I'm an adult, I'm 6'3". I've mentioned this in a bunch of my videos. I'm a very big person. I usually complain about the size. This is not the most comfortable grip for someone of a larger size. So if you're an adult, maybe go for a different blaster. The thumb hole stocks typically reduce the comfort of the blaster or the, uh, the usable size in the grip. Centurion was pretty comfortable, the thumb hole stock, but when this is miniaturized like this, it's, it's really not. Um, the bottom of your palm here strikes the thumb hole little area and it's a little weird. Nothing's jutting out, everything is very smooth plastic, so it doesn't hurt or anything like that. It's just not terribly comfortable. But I'm sure if you have a smaller or average size hand, this will be just fine. Down here is a sling mount, so you can add your sling attachment point here, and then back here, and then it will sling like that. Nothing else is functional back here, it's all cosmetic, all these little cuts and everything like that. The externals um, are very smooth relative to other Nerf blasters, it's kind of a theme throughout the entire Rebel line. Um, they don't also have the InStrike digital camo pattern imprinted onto the shell, so it's also physically smooth when you touch it, um, and it, that makes it look smoother as well. And then this decal is um, probably a love it or hate it thing, I just think it looks goofy, I kind of like it because it's weird. Um, and I'm so used to standard Nerf guns, just blue and yellow and flat colors and other these crazy decals are going nuts everywhere, um, but I kind of like it. So operating the blaster is very straightforward. After you load the blaster, which I, I covered in the beginning, it's very easy. You just simply push the darts in. It's not hard at all. You prime the blaster using this gray thing like that. That's primed, ready to go, and it shoots one dart in that um, stage. To fire, you obviously pull the trigger and the turret rotates after you pull the trigger and you don't have to do anything. I'm a huge fan of this rotating mech because it's very smooth and very hard to jam as a user. The Maverick is my least favorite rotating mech because it rotates halfway as you're pulling the trigger. If you go very quickly, you jam it up and you're shooting air into a blank cylinder and that's just a bad system um, altogether. The alternative is to rotate on the prime, which is just very mechanical and very, um, it's not a very smooth prime usually. So this way, it feels very nice. You don't have that ratchet sound. Um, it's very smooth and it's very hard to jam, which is very important. So you can go very quickly and the rotating should keep up with a regular person. The trigger locks up before the rotating mech locks up, which is an important thing to note, meaning the trigger won't let you keep pulling the trigger if you're going too quickly. You'll feel it if you buy one. I will show you the blaster and the chrono. Using standard blue elite darts for consistency among all of my velocity readings. 70 feet per second. 69 feet per second, giggity. 68 feet per second, 72 feet per second, 69 again, huh? 67 FPS. They are slightly below something like the Pink Crush single blaster or like a fire strike. A single springer is going to shoot slightly harder than something with a turret because of the air seal problem. Um, but you're not going to see a noticeable difference in range and you won't be able to detect that really unless you have a chronograph. So pretty average velocity and range for an Elite Blaster. These are in fact standard Elite darts, just with a different color. You can use normal blue Elite darts out of this blaster with no problem whatsoever. I'll show you the blaster firing a little bit. So 
So my opinion on the blaster, um, overall pretty high. I like how it operates. I like its power. It's pretty average. I'm not sure about modification potential, but I haven't opened it yet. My only complaint is that it's very small and I'm not a huge fan of small blasters because I'm big. I mean, I like little pistols that are ergonomic for large hands, but the thumb hole stock doesn't really work with bigger hands. And the whole thing is just very miniature. This stock, like I would normally hold a uh, gun like this. That's, that's almost a foot um, of just awkward. If I feel like I'm playing paintball or something, um, and it's just bizarre. But I'm not the target market. This is designed for female children or teenagers or whatever. I'm an adult male. Um, so I can't really complain too much about that. It's still ergonomic and comfortable. It's just very little. That's really my only complaint about it um, in this kind of a class. If you want a front loading six cylinder blaster like this, it's a very fun blaster to use. The priming mech is very smooth. I'm very happy with that. That's usually the number one thing I would hate is these rotating things. A lot of times they're, they jam easily or they're, they're loud and gross feeling. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this blaster. So that's the end of the review. I have a bunch of photographs and other written information on my website. I will post a link in the description box to the review um, on my website of this blaster with additional photographs if you wanted to see anything like that. So that's it. Thanks for watching.